It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to do an update on Dashy, the dashboard for your home lab. So previously when I did this it was fairly new still. It has some really great features where you can set up kind of all these different looks and feels and you can change the theme to anything that you kind of like. You can make it look really different really quickly but you can also customize these themes if you want to. Uh, the one that I generally use is this one here called Colorful, and then I don't usually have it in this mode. I have it kind of set up this way. But I wanted to talk today about this part here that you're seeing, these widgets that we have installed, or that we have the capability to add in order to monitor different machines. Now what I'm doing here is I'm monitoring the CPU and the memory and the usage, basically, statistics of this machine that's a, that's a remote machine. So this isn't even running on the same machine that I'm monitoring. So I've got some remote monitoring of CPU and statistics going on for my different machines, which is awesome. And especially when you're running a home lab, I know a lot of you look for tools that let you kind of monitor this stuff. And the way it works is you set it up with glances and then use glances with bottle to run it as a glances web application. So you can basically run it as a website, which is really great. Now I've done a video on glances in the past, but we'll actually go through the setup and the installation on another machine just to kind of show you how it works and what you can get out of it whenever you do that. Very straightforward today, very easy to get set up, but kind of figuring out where it goes and how to set it up may be the trick. So a lot of this stuff in Dashy you can do straight from the user interface right here on the web, but right now you have to do this part through the configuration file, but don't worry, it is not that complicated and I'll show you how to do it. It's really easy. You just add a section where you want this to be, and then you add your widgets into that section. The widgets are super straightforward, and she's got the code out there right on the site so that it's easy for you to find. So we're going to get into it right after this. I just want to say thank you so much to all my patrons over at Patreon. I truly appreciate everything that you do for me and the way that you support me and the content that I'm creating for you. I love that you love the open source world, and I love bringing you new open source tech every week. If you'd like to become a subscriber, jump over to Patreon. I'll have a link in the show notes and in the description. Thank you again. Now let's get started. Okay, if you jump over to the Dashy GitHub page, which I'll have a link in the description for you as well as in the show notes, you'll see a lot of really great information. This is just so well documented. There's some really great examples out here. There's a little GIF video that shows you what you can do with it. There's really some cool stuff that you can do with this. So whenever you get this going, you can, of course, just deploy it from Docker. I've got a video on how to deploy this already in Docker, so if you're interested in doing that, go check out that video. I'll also have a link for that in the description and in the show notes for you guys. But as you keep scrolling down, you're just going to see so many different ways. So one, you can deploy this to the cloud if you want to. You can deploy it from source if you prefer to do things from source. Jump on it. It's there. You can do that as well. It shows you some configuration options and there's some sections on configuring. So if you look, there's links to the wiki that give you more information on each of these things that you might want to do. Here's the theming. Lots of different themes that you can choose from, but you can also go and customize your own themes. You've got icon support, so you can have icons for all these things. And I'll tell you right now, the dashboard icon setup that, that's linked right here is one that I did a video on, and it makes it so easy to get your icons set up. And I, again, that's in the video that I did on setting up Dashy in the first place. But the icons that they've got are tremendous. I've been trying to contribute a few icons lately that I've been finding for, for things that I run that I didn't see icons for, and they get them added so fast. I mean, I submit them in like almost the same day, if not the same day. They're in the repository. I just pull it down, and I've got those icons ready for my system, and it, it looks amazing. So really great stuff there. Um, status indicators, which kind of tell you like green is good, red is bad. So if you have the ability to set up those status indicators on a lot of your self-hosted services, in a really quick glance, you can kind of see like, is this thing running? Is it doing what I expect? Which is kind of awesome. And then you get to the part that I wanted to talk about today, which is the widgets, which can make your dashboard just go to a whole other level. So Lissy93, the, the developer who started Dashy, has been adding this widget support for a while, and it's just gotten to the point that it's really, really good. And I've had a few of you ask me about how do I add the widgets into my actual code. So if you go down here, you'll see this little link that says widgets. And when you open that up, you basically end up here on the widgets wiki page. And then down here, she lists, here's all of the widgets that she currently supports. Now, these are the things that you can just use out of the box with Dashy if you get your Dashy system up to date or you get a new version installed right now. 
But on top of this, you can also create your own widgets. Now, I'm not going to go into that today because I'm not that familiar with it myself. I may learn it over time, but she has great examples. She shows you a screen of almost every single widget and what the other options are that you might want to use for those widgets. And then she even gives you a code snippet. Now, knowing where this goes is kind of the secret, quote unquote, for me, um, that, that makes it easier for this to get set up and ready, ready to run. So the ones that I've got running today are actually out of this uh, CPU, let's see, but a lot of these are going to come out of glances, I believe. So yeah, maybe that's the system resource monitoring, this one right here. There we go. So these things come out of glances and you can see here, here's the GL and here's, so here's the stuff that you need. And you just need the IP address of the system and then this port for where you're running glances. So if you install glances and I've got a video on that as well on how to do that, but I'm going to show you real quick how to do it again here. Um, once you've got that up and running as kind of a web server and a service, you can, you can just point to this thing and you can pull this information out and then she just generates these really nice graphics for you to see what's going on in your system. So I'm just going to basically install glances on this machine that I'm running on and then we'll pull some stuff out and we'll show it here on my dashboard. So this one's, like I said, is running on one of my uh, Proxmox servers. So you can see it's really just not doing anything. It's just sitting there almost idle. Um, it's just running one thing right now. So really easy to kind of get it installed and set up. Um, and then we're going to run that on my local machine here. And I'll kind of show you how it works to add it to the actual dashboard. We're going to go to the widgets here. And we'll just do this CPU widget here in a minute. So we'll just kind of leave that up. But first, we need a, a terminal window. All right, I've got my terminal window up. So right now, if I type in glances, I don't get anything because glances is not installed yet. I do have pip install, but if you need to install it, you may have to do a uh, sudo apt install pip. Um, it could be something where you have to do DNF install pip. Um, you may have to do Python and pip3. So it just depends on what system you have. So depending on your operating system, you may have to do it a slightly different way, but you want to get basically apt install Python3 and then python3 pip. If you're running a Debian or Ubuntu system, this is the way that you're going to do this. And uh, I'm just going to hit enter and I'll put in my uh, super user password here. And it's going to go out and it's going to tell me, hey, you already have these things and they're already the newest version, so you don't have to do them again. If you didn't have them, it's going to run through and it's going to say, okay, do you sure you want to install these? Hit Y for yes and then let it run through the install. Once you've got that installed, you're going to do pip3 install and we're going to do bottle first. So there's this program called bottle and it basically gets installed with pip. And then we're going to do pip3 install glances. And again, it's going to go out and grab glances and it's going to start that installation for us. It's going to run through all the things that it needs in order to run that and it's installed. Now we should be able to do glances dash glances just to see what glances shows us. And if, if you've never seen glances, it's a really awesome application. I've got my screen really zoomed in so you guys on the mobile devices can see what I'm typing pretty easily. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see like, here's your network information. Here's your CPU information. Here's your memory information, you know, everything like this. So I think we'll get some good stuff out of this since I'm using the system to actually do some things right now. Um, it's kind of like top, but with so much more information, it's just, it's really amazing um, what you can do here. And uh, you can use the arrow keys to move around and kind of do some different things. It, it's actually really a, a cool system. And then you can just hit Q to get out of the glances view. Um, so if I do glances dash W, which is why we installed bottle, this starts up a server. So now I can access this glances in a web page. So if I go over here, I'm just going to open up the Brave browser here. And the reason I installed Brave is because it doesn't cache anything. So if we go to local host and then colon 61208 is where glances runs, we're going to get the same view that we just had, except it's going to be in our web browser. And the nice thing about this is now we can call this thing and we can grab some of these widgets and we can actually display some of this data that we're getting out of this. And that's what that's what Lissy 93 is doing with Dashy. So it's really pretty awesome that you can do this. So here you can see my dashy, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this. So if you want to edit this, you need to know a couple of things. Um, one, where is dashy running? Two, how do I access this whenever I'm not running it? So if I just if I control C, you'll see that if I go back and refresh that, it's gone. So we're just going to go ahead and refresh here, and it's gone. The web server's gone because I, I killed it. So I need that to run as an actual service. 
So I'm going to go back in here and the first thing I want to do is create a service. So what we want to do is put a system D service in place to help this thing run constantly. And it'll start up when the computer starts up and all those kind of things. So we're going to go and we're going to say sudo nano slash etc slash system D slash system. And then we're going to call this glances dot service. Very simple. So this is basically saying we're going to create a file inside of the etc folder. In, inside of that we're going to go in the system D folder and inside of that we're going to go in the system folder and right here we're going to create this file called glances.service so we're just creating a file in there now in here we need to put in some actual detailed information again I'll have this in the show notes so you can just go grab it copy it and paste it in you may have to make a couple of changes but it shouldn't be much um, so we're going to go grab that all right so I've grabbed that and I'm just going to paste it in and you can hear, see here, I've just gave, given it a description, which is glances in web server mode. We're going to use the after the network starts. So that's what this line means, which is after we get network.target running, we want to go down here and we want to actually start up glances. Now, we need to make sure that glances is where we expect it to be. So we'll check this in just a minute. We want to know this path and we want to make sure it's the correct path. Um, if your path changes, you may have to change this as well. Um, and then down here, multi-user.target just means, you know, it, it can run for anybody. It doesn't just have to be for my user. So we're going to just uh, save this real quick. We use control O and enter to save, and then you can keep making changes. And then if you're done, you can use control X to exit out of nano. And what we're going to do to figure out where that's running, we're going to do which glances. And this basically says, tell me which folder the glances stuff runs out of. So on Linux, you can do this. So you can see in this case, it's in my home folder. So we're going to have to add a couple of things to that file, but we'll copy this. We'll just highlight it and right click and then copy. And we're going to go back into that uh, pseudo nano uh, glances here. And we're going to go here. We're just going to get rid of this part here. And we're going to paste in that thing that we just copied so we can right click and paste and then there's the correct folder now I'll show you what happens so I'm just going to do control O again to save and control X and let's see um, we need to enable this we're going to do sudo uh, system ctl enable and then glances and it's just hit tab and it should fill it in and it's going to enable it and then if we do sudo system ctl start glances and then if we do again the the same command we can just do the up arrow and we can just come back and change this to status we're gonna see this right here where it says failed and there's a reason why it failed and it's because it's like I don't really know where that module is I, it's just like hey you gave me a path and I don't know what to do with that so the thing that we need to do is uh, we'll, we'll just control C out of that clear this out and we're gonna go back into our um, nano here for glances.service and we just need to add user equals and then our username and in this case you can see this is my username so if yours is running out of this location that's where you need to do this if you install this thing as root you're probably gonna have it like it was in my original file but uh, here we're gonna put my name and I'm gonna save and we're going to try this again. We're going to do sudo nano. Uh, sorry, we're going to do sudo system ctl uh, stop glances. I think, let's see, I don't know if this is going to work. It may not. Um, it says it's not loaded. Yeah. So sudo system ctl restart glan uh, start glances.service. And so it wants us to do a daemon reload. That's what I thought we were going to hit. So we're just going to highlight this part right here and paste it in. Then we got to put sudo because we're not root. All right, so this is why you watch my videos, I hope. Um, yeah, I messed up. So it, it, I didn't mess up on the file. But after you do the sudo uh, system ctl daemon dash reload. So we need to do this. Then we got to do sudo system ctl start again we've got to say start glances that service then we can do our status check so if we just go back and change this to status and now we can see that it's active you should see that it's active and this is what you want because that means it's running 
So if we go back to our Brave browser, now we should be able to refresh and we should get our glances stuff back up. So there it is. Great. So now it's running. That's good. I've got it running as a service. I know if I reboot my machine, it's going to come back and start running. It's not a huge deal for it to do that. And it's not really using too many resources for this to run. So that's great. So we've got that part running. Now we want to go and actually edit our configuration file for Dashi. So there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, so I'm just going to close that and I'm going to say SSH. So I'm going to SSH over to the machine where I know I have my Dashi Docker service running. Um, yours is going to be different, I'm sure. Now, if you're not running it in Docker, then you need to know where your configuration files are. But for me, I go to Docker Dashi public. And if I do an LS, you can see here, I've got this configuration.yaml back because it's the one that I was really happy with. And when I started messing with this stuff, I wanted to make sure I had a backup in case I just messed something up terribly. So it's always a good idea to make a backup of your configuration file first. So let me clear this out and I'll show you how to do that. So you're going to do CP conf.yaml and you're just going to hit a space and then you're going to do conf.yaml.bak hit enter and you'll have the same exact file that I have right here with this with this backup um, now we can go and we can do nano conf.yaml and you can see here's my configuration file so I'm going to come down to this section area I'm going to create a new section and I'm going to just hit these spaces so it's two spaces and then name, colon, space, and then whatever you want to call this. So this is my server name, so BIA, BIA, and this is BIA info. And then I'm going to set widgets. So before, instead of widgets, we used items. So here's the name of another section, and then I call it an item. And then I can give it a icon here. Um, I give it the item name, and then I tell it what the item title is, and then I give it the address to that server. So you can kind of see how this works. Then I've got my ARIA server. Then I've got my Nginx proxy manager. So I've got a bunch of stuff in that section, but they're all items. And the difference is that here, up here we have widget. So we've got widgets and then we have a type. And we tell it what type of widget it is. And we just create a list of those widget types that are going to be in that section. So you can put widgets and uh, items in the same section. It's kind of up to you whether you want to do that or not, but you can mix and match. You would just move down wherever you want it and then create a, a space and then make sure you space out correctly because this is YAML code and YAML code is very space dependent. And you would just type widget and do exactly what I've got up here. But in, in my case, I just wanted a separate section called widgets, um, which is fine. So I'm going to give this a new section. I'm going to go here. I'm going to create a new section. One, two, hyphen, name, colon, and we're going to call this Dell main info. So this is just going to be my section. I'm going to do four spaces and I'm going to type widgets, colon, I'm going to hit return. I'm going to do two, three, four, five, six spaces, and I'm going to do type. And I'm going to do the same type of thing. So we'll do gl-current-cpu. So this is going to give you that glances current CPU and it's going to be in that gauge kind of format. We're going to hit two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces, options, colon, and return. And then we're going to do 10 spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Host name colon is HTTP colon slash slash. And then this is the IP address of the machine you're trying to set this up on. So in my case, it's 10.34. So we'll do 192.168.10.34. And then we got to put that port number which is 61208 now the ID part gets filled in automatically I believe so there's nothing for us to fill in there um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to fill that in uh, and then I can add another thing that I want so we just filled in one so let's go let's go look at what she's got here on her site so that's this one that's the CPU usage so we did exactly what she has here Here's the C CPU usage per core. Let's do that one because it's a little different than what I have now. So you can just highlight this. She's already got the spacing. You may have to fix it when you paste it. I'm just going to copy. And we're going to go and we're going to go back to our terminal. And we're going to paste. So yeah, we need to fix our spacing. But that's okay. Just make sure you fix it so that it looks exactly like what's above it. Six, and then this one's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So it just had it shifted over, and then we'll fix our uh, IP address here. 
And that's really all there is to that. So I'm just going to do Control O to save. And then I'm going to do, I can just leave it open. We're going to go back over here to the Brave browser. There it is. So now we've got our other section. And you can see there's my gauge. And here's my CPU charts. And I've got a nice little overview. And the nice thing is I can collapse this. Like if I don't want to see these right now, I can collapse it. It's gone. I can get to all my hyperlinks and things like that. I can move those sections down just by adjusting it in the configuration file. But now I've got some really cool widgets that show me some information about my system and how it's running and what's going on on it. And these things update every few seconds, which is really great as well. So you can see it changes there as things kind of update and change. And I could add more charts and graphs if I want to so that it looks just like this one. Um, just kind of any of those widgets that you want to get that are those glances widgets, they start with GL. So that's really easy to do. Now she has some stuff for net data as well. I don't like to run net data. I found that net data is pretty heavy and, and just pulls down my system after a while. Maybe it's gotten better. I just haven't run it in like a year because it was just always like slowing my systems down so much eventually that I just didn't want to run it. So maybe they've fixed some of those problems, but I just haven't done it, but it should be the same thing. Install net data and then basically follow her examples. So if we go here, um, you've got a lot of glances, things that you can get. Um, so you've got this kind of recent CPU usage. So you can check out that chart. You've got current memory usage, which I, I kind of show uh, on that screen over there. So if you if you didn't see it, um, there is some stuff where you can expand and see a little bit more detail here as well, which is pretty cool. So you got CPU information here that you can expand and hide, which I think is awesome. But also uh, over here on this one, on the memory, you can you can kind of see what's going on there. And same thing here, you can see some specifics, which is pretty great. So she's got some really cool stuff here uh, that, that she's been putting in for these widgets. But there's just lots of them that you can choose from and kind of set it up the way that you want it. Um, so here's your memory usage history. Here's your disk space. So a lot of, you know, a lot of times, especially when you're running servers and things and you want to know, like, how's my disk space doing? This can be a super useful thing if you're worried about it getting full. And if you see here, it's got like this, it's, it's about to be full on the C drive. That's never a good thing. Um, you want to make sure that that's not getting overfilled so you can kind of fix it. Um, so you can kind of check that out. And see what's going on. I think that's pretty awesome. And then you've got this uh, disk I/O, so you can kind of see what's going on as far as how much input outputs going on in your on your drives. Um, this one I just showed you, the system load one, is is on my screen back there. System load history, if you're kind of curious about what's happening there. And then network interfaces, so maybe you want to know what your network interfaces look like. There's one that's on here that's called Network Speed, which is pretty cool. It doesn't use glances at all. It's just one that you can go kind of set up, and it's got a, a link to a website that basically lets you run a network speed chest right from your from your uh, doc, uh, right from your dashi, which I think is pretty awesome. Check out your IP addresses, um, CPU uh, thermals. So if you're getting any kind of temperatures from your CPUs, you can check that out as well, which is pretty great. And then you've got dynamic widgets that you can set up. Um, this is the speed test widget. I think maybe we'll go do this one next because it's got a few options here. I copied it and I'm going to go back into my code here and I'm just going to go over here. And I'm going to go paste. Now I have to go fix all my lines real quick. This is probably six off on every line, but we'll start with the first one. Five, six. Yes, it is. So I won't make you watch me do this, but I'm going to fix them real quick. So this is really pretty much it. Um, I just fixed and pasted everything, um, just copied and pasted, and then I just moved everything over six spaces so it would be correct, and I'm going to save that, and we're going to go back to our Brave browser. There we go. So now we've got a speed test out here on my dashboard, and I can just click the button, and it's going to go out and it's going to do a speed test. And you can kind of see what kind of speeds I'm getting, so it's doing the download test first, then it's going to do the upload test, and once it's got those results, you can see what you've got, which I think is pretty great. So it's not a consistent, like I'm just testing over and over and over, but it, it'll do it when I click the button. And it's right there for me to click anytime I want to. And again, I can just hide this when I'm done with it. And you can set this to be auto collapse. So when you open up your, your dashboard, it's not showing immediately if you want. Um, so you can get to your links if you want to open things up a little more quickly. And again, you can change the layout here um, by clicking on some of these buttons. So you can kind of see there's a different layout here as well. And then we've got this layout over here that's really kind of vertical and small. Um, kind of up to you how you do this and, and how you kind of set up your dashboard. I kind of like this layout with the widgets in it. And it feels like a little bit better to me. And then, of course, the theming, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with. I kind of like the material dark. It makes it look a little bit cleaner to me. Um, and then when you expand this out, that's going to look really nice as well. So yeah, 
really cool stuff. Dashi's got some great stuff, and it's just getting better all the time. The widgets, I think, are just a tremendous add. So a couple of really cool things that I like is she's got API response coming soon, Prometheus data coming soon. So a lot of you guys probably run Prometheus right now to collect up data, and you want to see some visualizations of that data. Again, right on your dashboard is amazing. Instead of having to jump over to a Grafana dashboard, being able to display some of that stuff right on your dashboard here, I think is going to be awesome. So I think that's really great. I think that's that's cool that that's coming soon as well. Just so much great stuff. So I just wanted to kind of go through this. I think it's a tremendous set of tools that you can jump, just put together and kind of make it look however you want and really make it kind of an awesome setup. So I hope you guys will get out there and try this. I hope you'll test it out, see what you think, see what you can do with it, and then show off your work. Put it out there on my discuss.opensourceisawesome.com site. Just upload an image of your screen and let us see what your dashboards look like. I would love to see some of your daily, some of your layouts and see what you can do with this thing. I think it's really great. I'm excited about it. I, want, I really want to set up my dashboard to have just tons of information about my different systems because it's really what I set as my home page on my browser. It's what I see right when I log in every day. And for me, that's tremendous information as a person who runs a home lab, as a person who runs open source software all the time. I definitely want that information that helps me keep everything up and running and make sure that things are running properly. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it, and I'll talk to you next time.